What's going on, everyone? I'm Abby Fernandez, and I'm here with San Francisco 49ers defensive end Solomon Thomas. What's up, man? How's it going? Uh, it's been good. It's been good. Definitely crazy time for sure. But, you know, a blessing to be able to work and a blessing to be around uh, my teammates and people I enjoy working with. So it's been it's been fun and uh, getting after it, getting better each day. So it's been exciting. Absolutely. That's good to hear. So before we get into football, let's talk dogs. So Solomon here, who's a big advocate for mental health awareness, basically asked the 49ers last year to get an emotional support animal. And they did. So for the folks out there that don't know who Zoe the Frenchie is, why don't you tell us a little bit more about her? All right, Zozo, uh, Zozo is our team dog. Um, so what happened about last year, uh, it was during camp. You know, I went up to Austin. He, um, you know, he works with our uh, um, player engagement. Uh, and but I was just like, hey, Austin, you know, we, we need a team dog. Uh, you know, I feel like, you know, camp's a stressful time. You know, you know it's really hard. Uh, I feel like, you know, having a dog would be great for the guys, you know, be a stress relief type thing. Um, you know, and, and at the time we had one of our coworkers had their dog Vito here and we, everyone was talking by, you know, play engagement and we were like just playing with Vito and like messing around with Vito and, um, and Vito's like, a, he's a cute little dog. And, um, you know, guys just all, all, always in the office. So I was like, oh, so, you know, when Vito's gone, we should get our own dog. Like, and, and we should have a team dog. And he was like, all right, you know, I talked to John and, you know, he talked about it with John and John was like, yeah. And, so, um, you know, Austin found, uh, found Zoe and, you know, we kind of all pitched in and, and all, Austin mostly, but it was, uh, I don't know, just, just having Zoe around just helped us a lot, you know, just helped us like, you know, to, if we need to like get our mind off of bad practice or a good practice or a stressful time with family or whatever's going on, we just go in there, hang out with Zoe, you know, she just wiggles her butt around, you know, runs around, goes crazy and, you know, we have a good time with her, but um, she's, um, she's hilarious. She's a bundle, bundle of joy and she helps us, you know, just feel love sometimes, you know, dogs have that ability. Um, you know, sometimes we feel like we don't deserve dogs or how much they, they love us, but it's always definitely in that category. Okay, so I want to ask you, do you have pets of your own? So yes, uh, my family, we have a dog. Um, his okay. name is Mickey. Wait, what's his name? His name's Mickey. He's, uh, Mickey. he's a pit Cute. mix, um, a pit and boxer mix, and he's the sweetest dog ever. <laughs> well, yeah. Now we know that you have Mickey, but if you can get any pet, any any pets in the whole animal kingdom which one would you get and why dang um you said i can't you said i can't say mickey well you have mickey already so this would be an additional companion i have mickey already uh honestly i'll probably get a hippo <laughs> they're very dangerous solomon i i think you know this i think they're so cool i think hippos are so cool i think like i don't know why but i just, I just I've been obsessed you with, like, them. like three years i've been obsessed with hippos and bears for like three years so either a hippo or a bear like i would just try to find a way to raise it and become one with it and you know okay <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting choice never would have thought you would have said that okay so what do you tell someone that is thinking about adopting a pet right now but they need a little convincing. What do you tell them? Um, you know, I just want to encourage everyone out there, you know, to really crew the shelters and, and, and adopt. Um, it's really important, you know, to rescue the dogs because we can rescue the dogs, but they also rescue us. And, and the, it's how much they help us out mentally and, and how much they love on us is important. So, you know, I just want to encourage everyone out there to go uh, clear the shelters and adopt. So for the um, football content I promised earlier, again, the 2020 NFL season is about to start September 10th. You guys, the 49ers, are playing your first game September 13th against the Arizona Cardinals here at Levi Stadium. Um, we know, obviously, this is the first game you're playing since the Super Bowl. How are you feeling? How's the team feeling right now? You know, we're feeling great. You know, we're in the grind days of camp. You know, just trying to get better each day, trying to enjoy our time around each other really trying to build as a team. You know, uh, it's a great time to get better, great time to grind and have that grit. So just trying to pick up, pick off where we left off and, and become, you know, the best team you can. Awesome. So the NFL has left it up to each team to sort of choose whether or not you'll have fans in the stands this season. Now, we haven't really heard much from the 49ers. It's still indecisive there, but it looks like we probably won't be having fans in the stands because of course COVID. How do you feel about that? Do you think that'll sort of have any effect on you as a player or the other players, or even as, as a team, you know, playing out there? Um, I don't know if it's gonna affect us as players, but it's gonna be weird for sure. Um, just not having fans around, it's gonna feel like a scrimmage or a little practice. So, um, you know, it's definitely gonna be different and something we're gonna have to adjust to, but, um, you know, we, get, we have to listen to the medical professionals and we have to be safe and keep everyone safe. So that's part of our responsibility and 
you know, until they say it's safe, you know, you can't let people in. So. What do you tell the fans that are bummed that they can't go watch you? Um, I tune in at home, you know, make some popcorn, you know, scream at your TVs. We'll hear that energy, you know, through all the frequencies. So, you know, keep, keep yelling for us. You know, we need that going on. Okay, last question here. What are three goals you have for the season and how do you plan to accomplish them? Um, you know, I'm not, uh, not really with my goals, you know, I'm not really a, a numbers kind of guy, but you know, just the my, just three goals, you know, to, to be the best team that I can be, um, you know, for my teammates, you know, to be the best me I can every play, every day, um, you know, and uh, to go out there and help my team win, you know, those are just three, three goals that, you know, if I focus on every day, you know, uh, you know, I'll accomplish all of them. So, yeah. Awesome. Very well. Well, thank you so much, Solomon, for taking the time to talk to us today. Best of luck this season. Like you said, we're going to be cheering you on from our living rooms. That'll be fun. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Okay, so now I'm joined by Oakland Ace pitcher Liam Hendricks. How's it going? How are you? I'm good. Thank you guys for having me. Awesome. Okay, so you and I were talking a little bit earlier, and I found out you have like a bajillion animals at home. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so we have five cats. We have uh, Henry was our OG, and we've got Leroy, Mitchell Pritchett, Temperance Brennan, and Winnie Cooper slash Winnie Sanderson, depending on how she's acting that day. So she's been a little bit more of a Winnie Sanderson most of the time. Oh, and okay. then we had, we've got uh, two dogs, Jack and Stella, and we're actually uh, in, in the business of getting our third dog, Sersha, right now. Wait, so I have to go back to these modern family references, because I mean, I guess you're a really big fan then. Mitchell Pritchard, you have Stella. So are they named after the show? So Stella was, fans? Stella, she's eight now. So she's, um, well, I think she's nine, eight or nine. She, she's up there now, but she, um, yeah, she wasn't named after anything like that. It was when I used to drink. And so Stella Artois was uh, <laughs> kind of my go-to. <laughs> Uh, and then Mitchell Pritchett was actually displaced through Hurricane Irma. We live in Fort Myers, Florida, and he had been displaced with Hurricane Irma. I kept coming back to one of my uh, close friends, his business. And so he was like, hey, look, you guys deal with animals. Can you come check him out? Just make sure he doesn't have an owner or a chip or anything like that. So we grabbed him, uh, and then he he's never left us. So we got him all checked out. And, yeah, Mitchell Pritchett, because he's a ginger tabby, which kind of fits the mold. <laughs> you got to give me some pictures. I got to see all of them. Oh, that's oh, we'll cute. send some of them. I want to ask you, now that we know how many, you know, uh, pets you have, what if you had the choice to choose any pet in the world, I mean, in the entire animal kingdom, which one would you get and why, Liam? Any. Ooh, I mean, <laughs> I feel like it would be a little irritating to try and feed, but I'm going to go with a shark. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. This is okay. Why a shark? I'm Australian. It's kind of like part and parcel of how it goes. I mean, everyone's going to pick you. They just assume I pick kangaroo or a koala or a wombat or something like that. You don't want a stereotypical one. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, it's either a shark. Or, I mean, you could go platypus just because it's like everything. Those, just, are, just, yeah. those are wild choices. But wait, I want to know what type of shark. I mean, that's super important. Uh, I'd, I'd like to say great white just because it's it it's got them it's it seems to be ferocious but they also have that they're a very routine based animal which is similar to the way i am so they like they go to the certain areas every time at a certain point of the year and it's kind of what baseballers do so <laughs> i feel like that's a that's a good fit but that we have a little bit a of a lake fit. at the back of our house and i'm not quite sure if it, i don't think it's big enough for it to fit in there so we've got the alligator at the back right now we got bill gators at the back Oh my gosh, look at you. You need a show, Liam. You need your own show just with all these animals. That's so cool. I love that you love animals so much. So what if someone out there is, is contemplating on maybe adopting or rescuing a dog and they're really not sure? What do you tell them? I mean, my biggest advice is do it because like we've all, pretty much all of our animals are all rescues. Um, we don't kind of, we adopt, don't shop. It's just one of the things that we've kind of gone through. But um uh, for me, the biggest thing is like you put it into a perspective of, okay, when you come home after having a rough day, pandemic or no pandemic, it doesn't matter. The pets don't change their opinion of you. Like you can come home and you could have had a, like for me, I could have had a really rough outing. I could have just blown the game or done, done whatever. I can come home and my dog's going to greet me at the door with happy, smiling faces, wagging tails. And it just lifts your spirit straight away. I mean, having something around that is that just has that unconditional love for you that, that is always happy that's always wanting to spend time with you i mean it's it's, it's special i mean it's it's something that you don't get 
and humans most of the time because i mean at the, you know how it goes i mean you can you can be annoyed at your wife you can be annoyed at your husband you can be annoyed at your significant other and then all of a sudden the dog comes on and it just de-escalates the situation <laughs> that's very true that's so true I, I almost don't trust people who don't have an animal <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way of putting it wait i don't i don't have an animal but it's because i can't have one don't don't right. distrust me, Liam. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's a good way of putting it because I think it, it takes a lot to be a pet owner and it takes so much love and devotion, you know, that you have to have in yourself. But okay, enough about pets. Let's talk a little bit about baseball. Crazy times. Crazy times is how we can put it, right? You're playing in the middle of a pandemic. You're playing without fans in the stands. I mean, basically an empty stadium. You may have some little photo pop outs, but it's just very different. What's it like to play during a pandemic right now? And what's it like to not have fans there, Liam? It's definitely different not having fans, but I think most teams have done an extremely good job with the fake fan noise. <laughs> um, it definitely helps. Like, I mean, it's unbelievable how much those cutouts, like we went somewhere where they didn't have that many cutouts and all of a sudden you're just looking around and the cutouts really do just help whether it's just your peripheral vision whether it's anything it's just it's amazing but uh the fan noise has been huge because we played a couple games before and during our summer camp and yeah I, I don't think i do well with echoes and everything like this it's just it's an extremely hard thing to get your mind around but uh it's almost it's brought that sense of normalcy back into life for us it's almost like we've got something to strive for we've got something to work for we've got something that we train the entire off season for that's still around it's able to kind of bring that back into place for us. So, I mean, we uh, as the A's organization are doing a pretty good job of making sure we're wearing masks at all times, we're social distancing when we can, and and making sure we're taking the necessary precautions because we do have several high risk guys in our team. That this isn't just a thing where okay, like 99% of the times you're going to be fine, you're going to have a cough, you're going to lose some taste and smell or anything like this. But we've got a few guys in the team that this potentially could put on a ventilator, and this is what we're trying to avoid. Absolutely. So um, tell me, what are some of the positive and negatives you've taken so far from this shortened, restricted season? I, I like the fact that I was a little bit more malleable than I thought I was going to be with all this sort of stuff because I'm not necessarily OCD, but I have a rigid structure of things that way it's set up and I need it to kind of go that way. Um, the negatives obviously are the fact that there's no fans, there's no fan interaction, like even on the road, especially like at home it's really cool because we our fan base is huge we get they, they get there early we've got right field will and the, the bleach creatures out there we've got all this going on but on the road it's really noticeable because when we usually take batting practice the opposition fans are allowed in and so you miss that kind of witty back and forth with some of the fans about them asking for balls in creative ways and all this sort of stuff so we miss kind of that that aspect of it the 60 game schedule is another drawback for me i like the longevity of the season i like the fact that if i have a little bit of a rough stretch. I've got enough games afterwards to kind of recoup. Whereas this year, if you could have one or two bad outings and your entire season's done, and it's just, it's it's gonna make it a little bit tough. But I mean, right now I like the I like where we're at. The team's obviously doing well. Um, and hopefully we can kind of ride this all the way up and we can get past this one game playoff stuff yeah. we've had the last couple of years. That's what I wanted to ask you. I mean, what do you think that um, are the Aces chance right now of winning the World Series? And do you think the title will be tainted? Uh, no, I don't think it'll be tainted because everyone's on the same playing field. Uh, there's, it's different when one team has an advantage over other teams or if there's scandals like back in the, the early 1900s and stuff. So I don't think this will be tainted because at the end of the day, there was like, we went from 100, we, before 162, 154, before 154 is what, 145. So every season has kind of gotten a little bit longer. I don't think there's ever been a, sh a season this short, but it's it's um unfortunately it's it's something that happened but i don't think it'll be tainted and i mean anything less than a world series win for the a's this year is, is going to be bad it's going to be a bust i mean that's what we're aiming for that's what we're shooting goal. there's no there's no secondary prize for us it's either win or go home and that's that's what we need that's the mindset we have in our clubhouse that we can win this and we will win this and that's what we have to take into it yes 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 okay very well you've been awesome thank you so much liam for sharing all of these personal you know stories about the pets you have and about you know the ace this season um you've been the best thank you so much for talking to us today oh, of course thanks for having me i'll send over some photos of all the animals as well love that and guys remember you can always head over to nbcbayarea.com forward slash clear the shelters to get all the information you need to know if you're thinking about adopting a pet and if you can't adopt you can always donate all right guys thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time